My name is Arlene Steffi, and I am a birder. Well, I'm Martin Kastner. I'm a PhD student at Iowa State University, working mostly with a Sali, but I'm also a birder. Island Dano, Cocos Island, is an atoll island in um, the lagoon off the off Malesa, and it's ecologically somewhat different than the rest of Guam. And also, for a long time, it's provided a predator-free site for many seabirds and landbirds to persist. That weren't able to persist on Guam. Or maybe three quarters of the island is private, but the other part of the island, the westernmost part of the island, is uh, belongs to government of Guam. And there is a pier, not a usable one, on the western part, while the pier on the eastern part is private and belongs to Cocos Island Resort. So in terms of the bird community, Dano is, is somewhat dominated by seabirds. There's three main species of seabirds that you can see there. And the first one that you see just as you're pulling up to the main pier is a fahang or the brown knotty. I have also noticed the brown knotty as well as the black knotty. And then the chungi or the white tern. There's another white tern that's just recently started visiting Dano and that's the black nape tern. The tutsuku come in dark morph, white morph, and there is a pied morph. That, that one is pretty uncommon. Some of the other seabirds on Danu are the luau, or the brown booby, gaga manglo, or the frigate bird. And I've seen them flying over Danu and terrorizing the chungi. And others have seen tropic birds, or utak, the, especially the red tail. Dano is a, is a real magnet for some of the migratory species as well. The main ones are several species of dulili, so the turnstones and the tattlers, both species, so the gray-tailed and the wandering. And then the golden plover and the black-bellied plover do also visit the island. I've seen quite a few wimbrel. So one bird that we all see plenty of is a gagapale, the Eurasian tree sparrows, the kakak or the yellow bittern, Philippine collared dove. The sali, um, yeah, that's one of the special birds on Dano, and it's a perfect island for them because they're seabirds and they like eating the seabird eggs. They have at least some fruiting trees, and they also love going after lizards and geckos. They're probably a unique population, you know, possibly genetically, we see more leucistic, more white birds on Dano than we do on the main island. It's kind of a sign that the Dano population is somewhat self-contained and really unique. It's a particular concern with the arrival of brown tree snakes to be especially vulnerable, and they seem to be declining fast. That's extra pressure to get the snakes off of Dano. Dano is Guam's only you know, present day wild population of cocoa. They are definitely breeding on the island. And you could see that through birds that are unbanded. So the birds that were released there all had metal bands on their legs and some of them are also carrying transmitters. But then whenever you see a cocoa on Dano without any of that kind of extra gear, you know it was born there and, and you can see quite a lot of them. One of the important things about seabirds and that's very unique about them is that they're basically the link between the ocean and the land. And especially on islands, seabirds are the ones that are bringing in new nutrients and nutrients from the ocean onto land. And there's very few other animals that do that. And so through their you know, droppings, guano, the fish they drop, their, their dead bodies. When they pass away, then the, that flows on to the plants and it also turns into insects, other invertebrates like crabs and azuzu. Then that helps support all the reptile populations and the uh, land birds. And it also flows on in, into the reefs and leads to healthier reefs and more fish. And so all of those things are things that you get when you have healthy seabird populations, but they can easily disappear. So another important reason to protect the, the seabirds and restore seabirds. They are very important to navigators. They use the birds to clue them in to the location of the islands. You know, when you get 
a healthy seabird population, there could be thousands or tens of thousands of birds in the colony. And that just makes such a difference to the ecology. I mean, you know, right now, all we're doing is eroding and losing nutrients and losing topsoil. And, you know, the seabirds could build that up really quickly. Important to conserve, Cocos, for the coming back of the birds. Not just for the birds themselves, but also for the whole ecosystem.